uh, we had a situation that 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 caused me to uh, yesterday to react. Two of my executives came to see me in the hotel. They knew that I had given, Mike Bloomberg is a friend of mine, and I'd given $50,000 in support money to a, uh, a, 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 a referendum issue on our ballot in Nevada tomorrow that, that says that uh, Nevada will have background checks that conform to the federal law on sales of, uh, of guns, even if they're done privately. Now, on the surface of that, to, it, it you know the the anti-gun people or the gun uh, background check people ha seem to have the high ground, and they say, look, we don't want criminals and insane people getting pistols and and guns. Well, you know, to, at, at first blush, that makes perfect sense to me and to others, and so, and that's the way it's been presented to the public. Well, when these two men came to see me yesterday. And they're, they're, they're substantial executives in my company. They asked me about it. And I said, well, it means that if you make a private sale, you have to do the same thing you do at a gun shop. You have to fill out the uh, form. I forgot the number. It begins with a nine. But it's the Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms Division of the Treasury. And it's an affidavit that you have to sign under penalty of law. And there are certain conditions in order to own a handgun that you have to meet. They're listed in the Brady Bill or in the federal law that now applies, will apply to everybody if it passes. And it says that uh, these, these conditions are listed uh, alphabetically for A, B, C, and so on and so forth. Well, in order to answer the question of my colleagues, I punched up the affidavit and the questions on the computer and questions B and C and one called E are fascinating because they've never been discussed. B and C say that when you have to sign this now under penalty of law, that uh, you are not now under indictment or, or information, that is to say, been accused of a crime that a judge could award uh, more than one year in prison. Now, what that, that doesn't really spell out uh, insane people per se, but it also includes anybody that would be indicted or accused but not convicted. Remember, we're innocent until proven guilty in this country. If you fail to file a tax return, if you had done any white collar crime, but you would only, be only if you're in accused America of that, to right? Only gun. if you're you accused of federal it. criminal registry. That that's B and C. They they describe uh, this as the as a disqualifier. If you're accused, not convicted, of any one, any felony for a year or more, and as I say, that would include failing to file a tax return. Right. But the most fascinating question of all is E. It says, are you a user or possession of any marijuana, a stimulant, a narcotic, or a depressant, or any federally controlled substance. So I was interested in what a federally controlled substance is. And it turns out it includes testosterone. Hmm. If you've got testosterone and you haven't got a prescription and you sign this affidavit, you, uh, you've committed, and you, you say, I don't, I don't have it, then you've also committed a felony by, or a misdemeanor, misdemeanor by not telling the truth, and you're ineligible to hold a weapon. That means that even though they may legalize marijuana in California as they have, or Colorado as they have, or maybe Nevada tomorrow, that that in spite of the local law, if you're possessing, possessing marijuana, you're disqualified from owning a weapon. So what if you already now, have a weapon? Though, Steve, 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 just help me with this. When if we're you, interfering you already with have the Second it. Amendment, a constitutional right, and at the same time, uh, you're violating the federal law. Imagine this. Any federal officer or law enforcement agency, state or federal, can come and ask you, uh, are you holding marijuana or testosterone without a prescription? Or emperor compound number three, a thing you use for colds, it's got a little codeine in it. You, you either tell the truth in which you've self-incriminated and self-indicted yourself for all intents and purposes, or you lie and you've committed a high misdemeanor or a felony by lying to law enforcement. Now, when I looked at this, I realized that, as usual, our laws are fuzzy. 
inappropriate for me and I told this to my 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 colleagues that if you're dealing if you're going to interfere with a federally constitution a constitutional right like the right to bear arms then any restriction on it and I think certain restrictions are appropriate some of them are in the law if you've been committed to a mental institution no, which is part of the public record fair enough if you've committed a violent crime and you're a real serious felony uh, not a white collar crime I think no one would argue with that but that's not what the law says